welcome. Uh, if you were looking for the wholesome dog, congratulations, you found it. Um, I am your host for the evening and one of your two co-founders of the wholesome dog. My name is Julie Lynn and I am joined um, by my colleague Wendy here. And we are so excited that you have joined us. So if this is your first time here, which it looks like we have some new faces, which is awesome. So welcome. Um, but we want to just tell you a little bit about the wholesome dog. Um, we, Wendy and I are two very experienced crazy dog moms who have um, gone through the frustration, the craziness, the all of the emotions of, you know, having an animal and wanting to do best by our animals. Um, and so we created the Wholesome Dog um, to offer mostly free resources for pet parents and pet professionals on topics from nutrition to health and wellness to behavior and everything in between. Um, all month long, which happy leap year, leap year day, um, I guess, uh, all month long in February, we have been um, featuring different speakers and topics around canine cancer awareness. Um, unfortunately, one in two dogs by the time they are 10 years old will be diagnosed with some form of cancer, which is awful and tragic. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why for that, um, that we've been exploring all month long. And you're welcome to check out our YouTube channel and watch our, um, our past classes. Most of them are up there, um, just as we're recording tonight's, um, class, um, so we've been learning about different supplements, both preventatively as well as those that, you know, are super beneficial for dogs who are active um, in cancer treatment. And we wanted to tie up the month by featuring um, two amazing um, small businesses that are owned by women who feature some of our favorite products because we know it can be hard um, regardless of where you are in the country or the world. I know we've had... We've had folks join us from Australia and Canada and the EU, which we're so appreciative. Um, and I know at least one of our two uh, retailers tonight can ship international. So we'll hear a little bit more about that, but um, it can be really hard to find those great supplements, those high quality supplements. And so um, we're really excited that um, tonight we have Krista Fox from the Pug and Hound Apothecary in, uh, is it Geneva or Lake Geneva? Geneva. Geneva, okay. I don't know if Lake Geneva is a thing or if I came up with that, but, um, city that's far North. Okay, great. All right. I'm not totally, I haven't totally lost my mind. Excellent. In Illinois. And then, um, Hallie Steen from Lone Star Pet Treats in Arizona. And what part of Arizona are you in, Hallie? Uh, Cave Creek. So we're North of Scottsdale. No, oh, the pretty part. Okay. Not the super hot part. Well done. Excellent. Still really hot. Still really hot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Um, so this the the way it's gonna work this evening is we're gonna hear a little bit um about what makes these stores so special. We're going to um talk about some of our favorite supplements and products. And it's not just supplements, right? We know that a whole food diet is really, really important um to optimizing our dog's health. And, you know, the more fresh food we can feed our dogs and get away from starchy kibbles and ultra processed foods, the better the outcomes are going to be for our dogs. So we're also going to talk about foods and some really cool um, treats and chews that uh, definitely make for some interesting conversation starters. Um, and so just lots of things. And then we're also going to give you an opportunity um, to ask questions in the chat. You're welcome to do this the entire uh, time. Put those in the chat. We will answer them or we'll we'll give them to Haley and um, Haley, sorry, to Haley and Krista along the way. Um, and then um, maybe they have some um, special treats in store for us or, you know, some cool stuff. But we want to also encourage you to, um, if you're going to shop, definitely consider shopping at these two stores because they've got great products. Um, both Wendy and I have used um products um from them and so we're just really excited about this so without further ado let me bring up um so this is krista fox from the pug and hound and krista we're going to find out who's in your lap in just a minute um yeah. and here's Haley. Haley, Haley, Haley. i'm struggling with my yeah. name pronunciation but we'll <laughs> get it um from lone star pet treats 
who is joining us from the store tonight. So we might even get a, a super brief tour. Um, but ladies, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. Uh, all right, so Crystal, let's start with you because you're farthest east. Um, are you? Who's on your lap? I know him. I I know of him anyway. He's quite famous. But who is this? Yes, yes. this is Bruce Wayne, the pug. He's being very fussy, so I have to hold him because he's just going to be a, a little butt because he wants dinner. <laughs> of course. Um, and he is he is actually the reason that pug and hound exists. Um, I was just basically a normal pet parent um <clears throat> got into the holistic world because bruce uh got coccidia and i stumbled upon Ooh. a natural remedy for coccidia and it worked and then the journey kind of evolved from there um i became a vet tech i've been a vet tech for almost a decade now um, because of him he's had uh he has spinal cord disease so there are a lot of things that popped up in relation to his spinal cord disease and just being a pug that i wanted to know more i'm always very inquisitive and in asking why so i decided to become a tech um and i have been a tech since yeah since then <laughs> it's been a while it's been like eight years now um so once i became a tech and learned a lot i was like i want to kind of mold both worlds and help educate people and be a resource for people so uh, me and my husband jeff opened up pug and hound pet apothecary in 2019 and we are probably one of the only stores that has the amount of supplements that I do. I, I pride myself on our supplement wall and knowing how to use all of those supplements because there's a lot out there. There's a lot of junk, there's a lot of good stuff, and then there's people that don't know how to use these things. So we, we mend both worlds. Uh, we have all the supplements in the store and we can help coach people how to use them, what works best instead of people just kind of buying stuff and not knowing where to turn. Um, my whole staff is vet techs. And so we're all very educated on uh, diseases, concerns. Obviously, cancer is a big one for us. Um, I do uh, personalized consulting as well. Um, sorry about that. That shouldn't have dinged. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, so we, we really help and cater to people that have specific, you know, medical concerns for their pets, whether they're cats or dogs. We, we can help with just about, just about everybody. That's awesome. That's great. Thank you, Krista. Yeah. All right, Hallie, give it to us. Tell us all the things. Oh, you are muted though. So we're going to have, there you go. Okay. There you go. Uh, so similar situation. I started my company basically because of almost COVID in a sense, but not. Um, I moved out to Arizona from Texas and we lived about 30 minutes from the closest store. So to drive into town, to pick up treats, to pick up food. You know, it was a little bit of a haul, 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back. And so I usually was ordering treats online. I was doing things like that because I wanted my pets getting treats that went along with their healthy diet. There was no reason for me to give them bad treats to go along with their nice and expensive, healthy food. Um, yeah. So either I make them or I drive into town or I order them online. <laughs> so I ended up starting making them. And I guess four years later, we're here. Um, I have two hairless cats and I have one mini Australian shepherd. Um, name whiskey but basically open the store in a sense for them um because not only am i passionate in the whole treat side of it but i'm also passionate in the side of being able to provide food i feel like food is the most important part of all of this Absolutely. in all day so no matter i'd rather someone spend all their money on whatever they can on just buying a healthy food for their pet and skipping the treats skipping almost the supplements as long as they can get healthier food in their, their pet's diet so that's where I'm at now I guess in the beginning it was more like along the treat side of it but now that I have the store I'm able to work with customers and actually help them with their diet and you know do more of the nutritional side of things so seeing how that's made a big difference and how many people have seen such a big difference in their pet's life it's uh basically encouraged me to do more we unfortunately and originally started with a couple kibbles we started with open farm we opened and started with like um what probably just two kibbles I don't remember now and now we're at the point where I can't even sell them anymore. I'm just like, they're, I talk people out of it. I'm like, yeah, they're fine and everything, but you're paying yeah. the same price for these. So you might as well just spend your money over here. And so now we have none and we're only doing freeze dried food, jelly cooked food, raw food, and, you know, air dried food. So that's awesome I, I to be at that point and to the point where people also have trust and faith in me to help them with their pet's nutrition. Yeah. Amazing. I love that. And, and yes, like as 
as a canine nutritionist, I yes to everything you both said because you know I think people underestimate the power right of a whole food diet and um I know we've all seen the changes when a dog goes from a really highly ultra processed you know kibble diet like something we will never we never recommend like a prescription diet which is not a prescription at all it's just a fancy way of putting crap in your dog and charging a lot more money for it um to to going to a whole food diet and you know, we, we talk about all the time on the wholesome dog, how we don't kibble shame because we believe in meeting people where they are, but there are always ways that people, if, you know, if their budget for their pet is not that big, there's still lots of things that they can do, right. That can make a huge difference. So, um, I love that that is a huge focus for both of you. Um, all right. So Krista, let's talk about how, um, let's talk about some of your favorite cancer supplements. Now, I will say if you recognize uh, Krista's name from if you're a CBD dog health uh, purveyor or uh, purchaser, um, you may recognize Krista's face and name from the CBD dog health blog. Um, she does right as a vet in her capacity as a vet tech and obviously a dog mom to a special needs dog like adorable Bruce Wayne here. <laughs> that face, that face. I'm just, I'm, I know. I'm <laughs> He's smitten. Dog. Um, don't tell my cavalier downstairs that I'm fawning over Bruce because she'll be jealous. <laughs> but um, but uh, what are your some of your favorite cancer preventatives or supplements that you carry there at the Pug and Hound? So, um, like you said, uh, diet is always you know first and foremost the foundation. I don't go past that if people aren't gonna if people are gonna you know stick with kibble while their dog has cancer. It's like you know what these supplements are going to be mostly useless. I mean, they'll yeah. help, but the, the, the diet is, is first and foremost. And then from there, um, CBD and mushrooms are definitely my first two go-tos. Um, Vitality by Myco Dog is specifically formulated for that. So um, we love that one. We also love uh, Mycobiome, which is Adored Beast brand of turkey tail mushrooms. If people just want to go with that route, um, that one is not as potent as the Myco Dog one, but it just depends on <clears throat> each person's preference. Um, other than full spectrum hemp extract and mushrooms, I love um, Connor Brady has a great supplement called AC4, and it's a type of kelp that has been shown to help with cancer and tumor growth. Um, I have a whole like cancer shelf basically for um, those types of supplements. Uh, Life Gold by uh, Pet Wellbeing is a good one. It's basically just you know a bunch of antioxidants because um, that's what you really want to pump them full of. So the yeah. beauty of what I carry in my store is I carry only whole food, uh, herbal and homeopathic. So I don't carry stuff with, you know, weird synthetics. So point being, there's a lot of my supplements that might not be labeled towards cancer, but are loaded with cancer fighting properties, um, full of antioxidants, things like that. So I have a, a pretty wide selection of what I like to use. Um, other than that, I'd say uh, Phytos Flora by Adored Beast would be my go-to because um, those canine-specific strains that are in there were um, actually studied in Sweden a few years ago and showed to be immunomodulatory, which is beautiful for cancer. And then there's all those gut repairing things in there as well uh, to help with their inflammatory response and their immune system. So it really depends on, on the owner's comfortability, where they want to start. I'm definitely a less is more, so I like to kind of keep it condensed and not go crazy because there is a lot a lot of stuff out there and people come to me with like all these other brands and options and I just try to keep it simple and use what I know is tried and true works well and that I can actually go to the brands and speak to someone that I know you know is honest and and trustworthy with you know the ingredients and where they're sourcing things because that's super super important with cancer you need to have the cleanest products that there are available. Yeah. And I'll just remind folks, if you couldn't join us last week for our awesome chat, um, lively, it, it, nothing with Angela Arlino is boring. Let's, let's yeah. just be real. Our very lively chat with Angela. Um, you know, she reminded us that the, the thing about cancer in synthetics is like, you don't want to put the two of them together. Right. And synthetics, the more synthetic ke chemicals or compounds that we put in, either our body or our dog's body, right, are actually attracting those cancer mutations and those, the, the free radicals. Um, I'll just note, you're both very busy. I mean, we all are busy, but I happen to see because 
This is the nerd I am. Today, there was actually an article that came out in the Washington Post. Um, and it talked about how there's a new study, shocking, that ultra processed foods were linked to 32 different types of diseases in humans. And I tell people all the time, even though we look nothing like dogs and they look nothing like us and we've got two legs and they've got four and most of us don't have a tail, um, we're very similar, right? When it comes to our gut and our bodies. And um, so we know that ultra processed is just, it's just bad. So I love how clean, um, I love how choosy and uh, you are about, because uh, I feel the same way. So yeah, that's awesome. Definitely give you know new brands that want to come in i it's funny when i get cold calls from reps i'm like okay you want me to ask you all the questions here we yeah. go and then they quickly realize it's not going to work out for them but yeah i mean staying away from synthetics is critical and you know keeping these companies honest is is tough work for sure because they just want to sell 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 and it's like yeah it's not it's not happening man no. like good luck so yeah, I'll tell you, you'll both appreciate this. Whenever I go to these trade shows, we were talking about it before we started recording, but, um, you know, you, you, I don't know how you all do it, but like when I go to these big trade shows, like I make a plan of where I want to go. Right. So I don't have to like stop at every single booth, mostly because I don't want to hear what they have to tell me. Cause I know I don't like their product. Right. Like, so I'm just not going to waste their time and I don't want to waste mine. Right. Um, and every once in a while you get like snagged, right? You get some, you get snagged by somebody and they're like, let me tell you. And I'm like, so I'm that, pardon my French, pain in the ass that will be like, what's in it? Like, what, you know, how is it manufactured? Like, what's your, you know, where's your efficacy testing? And they're like, oh, oh. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so yes, I'm, I'm choosy as well. Absolutely. So I appreciate that very much. Um, Hallie, so tell us about your store and, and some of your favorite, you know, either whole foods or treats or chews or supplements that you all, I, you all feature Susie's CBD. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Um, huh. I took a lot of the good ones. So <laughs> I'll just, I'll do yeah. something that's a bit different. Honestly. I mean, for, I think I'm just, I'm not a super versed in cancer. So I'm going to just start by saying that, but intermittent fasting. Yeah. Two, only feeding your dog once a day. It can be Huge. a good ketosis and same with us as us intermittent fasting. A lot of things go hand in hand. I know another good one would be Green Juju. All of her um, blends, she started her company because her dog um, had cancer. And yep. so all those blends she has are full of antioxidants and good vegetables that help, you know, with, I guess, I don't know if you would say reducing cancer, but, you know, making yeah. a change in their diet, especially. Um, but she got good results and that's how green juju kind of basically came about is just for her blends alone. Um, so those are, in a sense, two different things, but just knowing, I guess, obviously what's in your pet's food, that's the main thing and making sure again, no synthetics and limited and, um, there's keto diets out there too, but a lot of the foods are already sort of pretty high in fat, depending on which brand you really work with. So some of the keto ones like bones and co. They have yeah. like an extra keto diet. It was like two and one. So if you wanted a like super high fat, um, but I, I have a holistic diet and she goes, oh yeah, they, they say they're keto, but there's some foods that are like just as high fat as them. So unless you got that two and the one, but um, I don't think there's really any treats. I would say that would just be for like reducing stress. So that could be helpful for, you know, hopefully not getting cancer reducing, but not exactly. It's just a stress relief. So, well, well, <laughs> but it, don't, don't sell yourself and your store short, <laughs> Hallie, because you know, a lot of people like, all right, I'm just going to sound like a snob. So I'm just, I'm just going to lean into it here. Like a lot of people love their bully sticks and they love their like crappy, super starchy, uh, chews. What are those ones that are made of brown rice? Oh, the uh, no hides. <laughs> yes. No hides. And like, people are like, oh, these are great. And I'm like, okay, first of all, read the ingredients. Also, as we all know, not all bully sticks are made the same, right? A lot of bully sticks are made from things that you would never give to your dogs, you know, your worst enemy, their dog, much less your own dog, because they're treated with chemicals or you don't know how they're sourced. And so, you know, if people feel like they can't fully switch their food over to something that's low carb or not as processed, 
I always tell people that a really great swap is to swap out those crappy chews, right? Those crappy no hides or those crappy like bully sticks that smell like God knows what because they're not that good, right? For some of your whole like whole foods treats, like your chews, right? So like tell folks about some of like the fun and kind of conversation starting pieces that you you carry, Hallie. I think that's that's definitely worth talking about. That way this I guess conversation starter. A good one actually might be for cancer of the sardines because they're a good source of omega threes. So yeah. they're a whole freeze dried. Um, we also have this not a chew, but we have the salmon roe balls that are also another great source of like almost a not a multivitamin, but they're full of so many different healthy vitamins and it's natural form and they're unprocessed or not salted, which is super hard to come by as I figured out. But thankfully I work with another lady that it's just, I'm not going to go off into it. I go into rabbit holes all the time. Long story short, very, very great um, source salmon roe that, again, not salted, not processed, not cured. So you're not getting all that salt that is in most salmon roe. But I can go, I don't even know. There's so many good benefits of salmon roe because it's just such a great whole food source, even for fertility, all these different things you would not even think of. Um, but what else? Chews, why is it weird? Here we are. Uh, cow ears. We have rabbit feet, rabbit ears. We have quail hatchlings that are great. Also whole source. Uh, not well. They're very nutrient dense because they have the egg yolk sac in them still because they're only a day old, which is really weird. People think it's really gross. Um, hairs also and fur are good for digestion, good for their gut, good for their joints. Um, yeah. Great healthy. source of manganese. Yeah. So and dogs really like them a lot. I know they're again gross but dogs actually prefer them it seems like and people will try them and come back for more like i can't believe my dog liked it i'm like i'm so happy they did get some more <laughs> but i'm yeah, already yeah. For going I'll just people. give them like just take one home just take a little rabbit hide chip just take a something i'm like i promise you're to come back for more yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they absolutely always do they're like oh and they just pop one in their bag like just try it Yep. And then they end up loving it. Um, oh, sorry, Brucey. What I was going to say um, in terms of treats that actually are therapeutically beneficial for cancer, the, the issue is when you're doing a keto diet, you have to stay within that ratio. People kind of get like, oh, well, I'm doing this food, so I'm just going to you know, give them this treat. Well, that makes the protein not so moderate and the protein gets higher, so you have to kind of balance that out with fat. So what I usually recommend if they're really trying to be strict and keep to the keto ratio is uh, the cocoa therapy macaroons, because those are just pure coconut and those are a nice good source of fat. Um, and they're not going to completely throw off that ratio. Um, I do tell people too to just like look up keto fat bomb recipes, because most of those are dog safe, obviously don't do like chocolate and things like that. Right. But, uh, those are usually it, it is tough with with cancer when because people are like, well, I still want to give them treats. So usually I if they don't want to do the fat bombs or they want something else, the furry treats are great because they're kind of just inert. They don't like upset the digestive tract. They're a good source of insoluble fibers. They slow down digestion, help regulate blood sugar, which is really important for cancer, keeping that um, you know, blood glucose low and, and, and healthy. But like you said, most of the raw diets out there are actually ketogenic, meaning they put them into fat burning mode. But then when you up that, that ratio, like with bones and company, or I have my customers add like fat works lard to their food. Once you up that, then you're actually like in therapeutic ketosis where the dog is, is secreting ketones and like really burning those 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 ketones for fuel as opposed to just you know being in fat burning mode but almost every single raw food out there uh is already ketogenic so you you can pretty much even if someone doesn't want to switch the raw they're already doing <laughs> you can just you can just add fat to that recipe and kind of balance that out for them that's yeah. awesome Solution. good i don't know if you if anyone knows that products but they have a very good blog and resource guide on their website for all different restorative guides and they have a really good one for cancer and it has like a whole list of basically how to do it with their food and things like that but adding like fat works like you said um and cocoa therapy also like grass-fed butter um and things like that that you don't think of but they have a whole guide of like basically what to do and how to, to basically do it for cancer that's yeah. awesome and, and who was that uh, solutions pet products yes yeah no they're awesome yeah, and i would suggest printing it out because the way the fda is going after that brand 
those yeah. guys might not be up there forever. So um, Chelsea's doing her best. Uh, she's a bulldog. She doesn't, yeah. doesn't really take anybody's crap, but it sucks because, yeah. you know, the whole answers thing, you know, that whole nightmare. Cure had raw butter for pets in their line and it never really made it to the market. And it's just oh. so soul crushing because I'm like, damn, if that was out there, this would be such a great tool. So I usually recommend people find a local raw dairy co-op and get raw butter if they can, because you'd be surprised, you know, no matter where you are in the country, there's usually somebody that's getting raw dairy. You just yeah. got to you just got to find it. And it's it's cool. I love my customer base because of that, because I just find out through my customers. They're like, hey, did you know there's this co-op that's like right around the corner? I'm like, awesome. I can finally get my kefir because I drink yeah. raw kefir every morning. So for yeah. sure, you know, try to find a local co-op if you're looking for those weird ingredients to to add high quality fat sources, because as we unfortunately know, Kerrygold is not 100 percent grass fed butter and it's not raw. So we really want to go with raw unadulterated unprocessed as much as we possibly can with cancer for sure yeah there's a really what called nourish um they're on instagram and i think online but it's like nourish i don't know the whole thing. but they have raw i got raw i get raw cream from them you can get raw butter you can get raw cottage cheese sour cream um they have all like pasture raised wow. meat stuff that's low poofa and they really great eggs like so many good things it's called nourish i get it for myself and my pets i get the organs for my pets from them um but what else? Oh, I, I just came across a company today, had a rep come in of all times, and she was telling me about this company called Nugget. Let me grab something. I don't know if it's raw or anything. I don't know. But cause I literally just got this information today, but it's called Nuggy, Nuggets Healthy Eats. I don't know. Oh, if it's yeah. It's not nuggets. Nuggets. yeah. I don't so, know if it's raw, though. So, so actually, but- Hallie, I, um, we are having... So I was going to mention this at the end, but um, breaking news next month, uh, beginning next week, actually, is uh, why quality dog food matters month here at Healthy Food, um, at the Wholesome Dog. And we're kicking it off with Susan Thixon, who I refer to as the uh, Aaron Brockovich of the pet food industry. But um, we're actually having Dana, who is the CEO of uh, Nuggets Healthy Eats. She's going to come on and talk about all of the benefits of bone broth. So, okay. yes. They have a, butter that? That has a butter that has mushrooms. Um, it's like a, I don't, I don't know what kind of butter. Well, they call it, oh, yeah. So they, 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 butter. they call uh, it a, a butter. It What it is, like how I describe it to the customers and clients I work with is like, it's like the consistency of like baby food. Mm-hmm. And what's what's great about it is that it's it's just thick enough um, that it's nice for like lick mats or uh, uh, what are the Kong? Not the Kongs, but what are the good ones by West Paw? Oh, topple. topple. Thank you. They're they're great for topples or, you know, so it's thick enough and and it's got all organic like mushroom, banana, pumpkin. Um, so I don't actually know if that's technically keto, but it's, it's incredibly (laughs) nutritious and her bone broth is like gold. So yeah, I'm a big fan. I I, I love those products. And and Wendy, like whole food bite things are the first like squishy treat I've found that doesn't contain glycerin because I don't allow glycerin in my store. Yeah. Yeah. So, So Wendy actually has um has been friends with Dana, the CEO of Nuggets, for quite some time. So Wendy, Wendy's the one that introduced us or me to um Nuggets. And yeah, if anybody's looking for like an alternative pill pocket, which please don't ever feed pill pockets because they're terrible and they're crap. And just like uh Krista mentioned, it's full of glycerin, which her dogs definitely do not need. Um Bone Nuggets, yeah. Well, Nuggets Healthy Eats has this, this product called Bone Broth Jerky. And it is essentially just uh, their amazing, super clean bone broth mixed in with, I believe it's like coconut, Coconut. right, Wendy? Um, And it's almost like putty and it's great for like a pill pocket type use that is still very healthy and you're not putting chemical crap in your dog. So yes, highly, highly recommend the bone broth. So um, I love uh, uh, Haley that they that you had a rep come in today and talk about that so i had two reps come at the same time i was like ah <laughs> it always happens like that you don't have any reps and then they all come in on the same day or at the same time so that never happened i was like i'm so sorry i'm like juggling <laughs> but 
at both the back of them. I'm like, uh, all right, well. <laughs> but you know, with, like you said, with stuff that is like crap, I'm like, just put it back in the bag. It's fine. We don't do that here. We don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, you don't have to, just don't bring that next time. It's okay. You just leave it in the car. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Have some, like, one thing I used to get, there's a company here called, well, not here, but Animal Supply. And they had one product at the time. It was solutions that I would get from them. And the rep would always come in with all this stuff. And I was just like, so I'm just buying solutions. So it's okay. You don't have to come back anymore. <laughs> so for people at home, this is what, this is the kind of attitude that you want a really high quality pet store. You want a quality pet food store that is going to say no to 80% of the stuff that reps bring in and try to convince these pet food store owners that they need to have because there's a high margin or it's a, you know, it's the newest, whatever shiny thing. But um, if your rep is saying no to most of the things that are being offered to them, that's, that is like the hallmark of a good pet food store because there, that's how you maintain quality control, right. And your stock and then what you bring in. So thank yep. you. The as someone that I say yes to hundred percent of the time is my husband. I was going to say, yes. And, and full disclosure, <laughs> Krista, and I don't even think, um, Hallie, you know this, but Krista is married to, um, one of the amazing, I'll just, I'll just say it for you. DeRay. <laughs> oh, geez, DeRay? I'm sorry. DeRay. Okay. That uh, behind Green Juju. So um, I, I it's funny because Chris and I have never actually talked. And I was like, you're married to Jeff, right? Because I know Jeff. Yeah, he's <laughs> hard to forget. <laughs> this is a very small world, y'all. Like very, very small. It is it is highly incestuous, um, yeah. but in the best way possible. Jeff came in weeks ago and I was like giving him all these weird things that we have. I'm like, you can give it to your wife or you can give it to Billy. I was like, oh, oh yeah. We took it all. We've been feeding the quail heads to the dogs and they, they <laughs> devour them. Our pity is like a freaking vacuum. So you got to like hold it for her so she'll chew it and not just literally inhale it. So inhale it. That's they're, great. They're, they're a big hit. I said, can you be my middleman? I'm like, I don't know how else to give them to him or to y'all. <laughs> so, <laughs> <get me. laughs> so let me ask. Um, so, you know, it's great to see the number of folks we have here. And so folks um, at home, if you have questions, we would love to hear them. So please put them in the, or see them. We're going to ask you to put them in the chat. Um, I am going to ask you both a question. Um, and whoever wants to go first can go first. But um, we would love for you to talk about the benefits of pulsing. So supplements and or even just different treats and chews, why it's important to pulse and how that helps the body, especially, you know, for immune related illness like cancer or like Cushing's or, you know, one of the other many autoimmune diseases that are out there. So who, who wants to tackle that one first? I, I go. can. You <laughs> got it. <laughs> um, so, well, on that same note of, you know, pulsing and rotating, um, keeping track is really important. I just want to note that because I think it's something pet owners kind of lose sight of. And it's something I myself didn't do well uh, until the past few years, but definitely keep track of the supplements you're doing and do not add more than one supplement at a time. Don't add five things on the same day and then be like, oh, my dog had diarrhea. I'm going to stop them all. Like, give something a shot to work, you know, give it three to five days before you go off it or make a decision about it or add anything else. But in terms of, you know, pulsing and rotating, it, it helps foster adaptation in the body. So, you know, you get the body to adapt to changes better. Um, you diversify the gut microbiome, which is absolutely everything. Um, in, in keeping that variety going, you know, does help them, especially when they're dealing with illness and it is harder to get things into them. If you're switching things, you know, not too fast, but on a regular basis, you're going to get not only the diversity of all these different products, because every product's going to be sourced differently, processed differently and have different benefits, but you're also going to keep your, your dog in check to deal with, you know, changes versus you know, people that feed the same protein, the same food, the dog's whole life, and then come upon some kind of medical illness, whether it's like bladder issues, it, it's always going to require some sort of diet change. And of course, cancer, if you've been feeding the same protein over and over again, your dog's not going to be as, as apt to change as a yeah. dog, that's, you know, having its meals rotated on a daily basis, you know, meal basis, as well as those, those supplements being rotated. So I absolutely recommend it. And it actually raises a lot of eyebrows and people are like, do you want me to switch? And I'm like, yeah, 
you definitely need to switch, not only because of all the reasons I just mentioned, but also because if COVID taught us anything as retailers, it's that supply chain is not guaranteed. And if you get people to put all their eggs in one basket of a brand, we did this with Answers when it was still a good brand. We made a, a big mistake doing that because when Answers changed ownership and we dumped them from our store, people were like, what? What do I do now? Do I do? Yeah. So I always am pushing, rotating between brands, flavors, supplements, you name it, because it, it they're just the benefits uh, are, are numerous. So really, really good for, you know, getting their body used to that change and being able to kind of conquer diversity, which, you know, is very important when they're dealing with cancer. There's going to be kind of all sorts of chemical reactions going on with their body, which not to mention rotating supplements, you might get a supplement that attaches to receptors better and does a better job than just sticking with one and never knowing if maybe this other supplement might have more benefits for your dog. So yeah, rotating is is absolutely key. And I'm usually the silent one in this crowd, but I do have to add, if you do have a pet that has cancer, you're absolutely right, Chris. You should write down every single thing that goes in that dog's mouth because working with an integrative um, veterinarian that is the first question she asks me every time I meet with her is what are you putting in your dog's mouth? Yep. Um, yeah. And, and that was Wendy who's not on camera, but she's the other half. Um, and I am so glad that you spoke up Wendy, cause that is absolutely true. Um, I will also say that as a nutritionist, I do make my dog's food because I want to, but as someone who's managed multiple pet food stores in multiple states and, you know, is a nutrition advisor, um, I'll give you a perfect example. This morning, my dog had uh, freeze-dried food. Um, and then this evening, I she had a meal that I made, right? And, and because I was able to incorporate different proteins. And so um, sometimes it's convenience, right? So, so she had... Um, small batch turkey freeze dried this morning with some uh, beef heart because she's cavalier and she's prone to heart disease. So she gets lots of heart meat to support her. Um, she also got some sardines because the only kind of fish I can get her to eat. And then for dinner, um, you know, I batch prep. Um, here's the thing I would never wish on anybody, a dog that will only eat super, super hot proteins. So okay. My dog right now will pretty much, I can sneak the small batch turkey in, which is, that's just a, that's a recent development. Um, but she pretty much will only eat either, ready for this, venison or goat. Up until Green Juju launched their goat, I was like, I was driving to a halal market to buy ground goat. I was begging every hunter I knew. I, I joined a raw food co-op. I stocked up on all the ground venison I could get. Thank God she only weighs 15 pounds. Cause if she was 90 pounds, I couldn't be able to afford to feed her, you know, but like, but also diversifying, even though she will primarily only eat those two proteins, I will sneak in lamb, right. In terms of freeze dried stuff, or, um, I'll sneak in different organ meats from, from different animals. Um, I will do beef liver or so, there, even with picky dogs, there are ways that you can diversify, like Krista was talking about, the proteins or the organs. Um, I don't know if y'all saw it, but Gaines Family Farms now has like 100% elk chips, which, Hallie, if you ever want to, if you ever find a source of elk and you want to do anything with elk, give me a call. I'm your girl. Um, because like hot proteins, trying to find hot proteins, y'all, it's, 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 it's yeah. hard, you know? Um or that lamb because lamb's warmer too lamb's warmer but lamb is also damp and she's damp so i have to i have to go easy with the lamb because um and then all the veggies she gets she's on a barf model diet which for folks at home means that she needs a little bit more veggies so it's not keto because she needs a little more you know fiber and vegetation um but she's getting all the greens she gets are to drain damp so celery um, spinach, bok choy. We're just trying to drain all the damp out of her. And um... uh, I have to make Bruce his own. I call it brew ju because Bruce has a bleeding disorder. So I can't give him green juju greens because they yeah. have too much in them. So I, and he, he's a damp dog too. So yeah. I 
up uh, organic celery, organic cucumber, and yep. some organic dandelion, and that's his his draining blend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, I know she was on the green juju, the just greens for forever, and then we found out like zucchini, which is a main ingredient there, she doesn't do well with, and I'm like, are you kidding me? So that's frustrating. Yep, mama's mama's batch prepping every month a giant thing of. <laughs> Well, I just read these greens. If that makes y'all feel better, to learn something new because so this is a little bit different, but I think you might know because of Kelly. Um, she talked with Michelle that she does energetics and yeah. biofeedback, and yeah. I did that with my dog. Well, he's also a damp dog and has like a stagnant liver. I do a lot of holistic stuff. I take him to acupuncture and laser and, and chiropractic it's all in one, and she's you know ingredients with that, but. I talked to Michelle and she said his energetic is going towards lamb and salmon right now. And he's never had those. He's been on them for about a month or so, month-ish now. Um, doing well and stuff. But again, he's a damn dog. He gets ear issues really easily. Sometimes paw issues. That's kind of his two main things. Usually his ears though. And yeah. so I'm like, now I'm like, should I be doing this? <laughs> I'm like, here I am. <laughs> so so speaking of incestuous world, do you want to hear something? Are you ready for me to blow your blow your mind there, Allie? Hopefully. <laughs> Michelle. So everyone, she's talking about Michelle Thomas, who runs Magical Mutts. So before Michelle was Magical Mutts Michelle, Michelle yeah. ran the only all-natural pet food store in Vermont, and I managed it for her. Oh, so I used to follow her back then. It was, like, so crazy that it's all, like, evolved into this, because I was like, yeah. And then she, like, completely evolved. It's, like, a whole evolution, because she was yeah. so, I used to follow her, like, TikToks or, like, her Instagram yeah. And watch all of her videos I'm like this is so interesting and then like I kind of want to store one day here I am <laughs> so so I started teaching classes while I was working for Michelle we started doing classes online during the pandemic and that's how I met Wendy Wendy joined one of my first classes and then you know anyway see this world just is like Where? it's, it's like possible. forget six degrees it's like two degrees of you know super zoo or whatever so um Oh, Alyssa, this. Michelle, Alyssa. Oh my gosh. Alyssa says, Michelle was my vet tech before she started Rolling Meadows. Also loved Rolling Meadows. Okay, so Alyssa, we probably met at Rolling Meadows. I don't know if I look familiar to you, but um, I'm terrible with names. Okay, great. Yes, you said yes. All right. Hi, Alyssa. Shout out to my my peeps in Vermont. I, I'm no longer, sadly, in Vermont, but um, nothing but love. For, but, but Michelle, again, Ruthie was being so picky. And Michelle was like, oh, so and she never told me this while I worked for her, that she had this gift. And she'd always be like, well, I feel like, you know, Ruthie would be better around that. I'm like, oh, yeah, she's just really smart. Right. No, she didn't. She didn't tell me she had this like amazing intuition. So when she was like, I think I want to close my store and do this biofeedback. And I'm like, great. You want to practice on Ruthie? Because, you know, R Ruthie has been such a mystery for me. And um and I said, yes. And she's the one that actually said, Julie Lynn, actually Ruthie, I knew Ruthie needed hot proteins, but she was the one she's like, no, she actually really wants venison and goat. And I'm like, first of all, one, are you kidding oh. me? Like, those are the two <laughs> hardest proteins to source, right? Like, you know, Krista, commercially, it's next to impossible, right? Yeah. The only brand that had raw venison, which was Nature's Logic, is gone. So Exactly. Well, and, and I can't afford, most people can't, nor do I want to put her on Zwe Peak venison because that and it's right, right. Exactly. And I was like, venison, are you okay? And, and I said, are you sure? Like goat and venison, that's wildly specific. And she goes, just try it. And I was like, holy crap. My dog was like, all of a sudden wanted to eat again, you know? And I'm like, but wait, y'all, I got this, I got to take a step further. So <laughs> being a nutritionist, I asked Michelle to run through all of the vitamins and minerals right? And tell me if Ruthie was deficient or in excess or whatever. Then I went and took everything I had, had my holistic vet not only do the extra lab tests to run all of those same levels, but what Michelle told me matched perfectly to the lab results. I so I was like, okay, like, cause I, <laughs> I, I, I believe in the woo, but also like, I believe in trust, but verify. Right. You know, and, uh, 
do if you want to add to this. So my my mom had her cats do it with her three cats. My mom's cat, she pees. She has her, her own little issue. She's a bangle, very high strong. Long, long story short, my mom got another cat and she had a little cute necklace on her that she made. And my uh, her cat doesn't like to wear necklaces, but Michelle talked to her and said she wanted to have her own little ritual of uh, being brushed and have like a little crystal and her, her flower essence be told how beautiful she is while being brushed. Really. My mom's cat, literally. And then I was talking to her on the floor. She's like, I don't really know if I should do all that. Blah, blah, blah. The next morning, my mom's cat took the glove that my mom pets her with and, and was sleeping on her with the glove that she brought in from the living room, like right by my mom's head, put the glove right next to her two nights, two days in a row. And my mom's like, oh my. And then she got the crystal. And the crazy thing with the crystal, she got all three different ones. She got a white one. She got a rose quartz one and an amethyst. And uh, Michelle said, oh no, she wants the white one. And my mom's like, well, I, we'll see, whatever. She kept tapping it and playing with it and she didn't want to touch any of the other ones my mom's like well this one's really pretty and she's like no she like she sent me a video of her cat touching the white one that she wanted the white one i'm like this is too That's much hilarious. all right well now i'll have to put a plug in for michelle at magical mutts because yeah, you know, she, she I feel like a session I, with our dog xena and yeah it was- it was pretty pretty phenomenal where i was like wow that's dead on <laughs> girl has a gift yeah for sure but a lot of this too like kind of going back to um i guess pulsing a lot of it i feel like your intuition should be a part of this too and i've been on the train of for a while there especially right here until recently i was doing so much and not knowing if it's working or not working and both my two holistic beds thankfully they're like you probably should just do like one or two things at a time and see how it's going because i used to change my dog's food like every single day he was fine but i don't know if it was working or not <laughs> so like or what worked better i should say so yeah. trust your intuition and maybe not doing everything just doing again one thing at a time or only a limited amount of things for a while and not you know just trusting do does my dog really need mushrooms today does it feel like they do like just I mean I know it's weird but it's no really, no I'm I'm actually know. really glad you shared that because I I tell this to pet parents all the time you know it's it's very easy to go into a vet and get intimidated right? Because they're the vet. They went to the school. um, They have the training and we're just the pet parent. But what I tell people, and I have to remind myself of this too, just ask Wendy. She, We have these little pep talks with each other where <clears throat> you have the MD or the DVM or the PhD in your animal, right? Like you are the expert of your animal and your intuition even if you think you don't have one, you actually do because you know that animal better. Your your vet only sees them for maybe a couple hours a year, right? And so um, I really, I, I appreciate you saying that because I wish pet parents had more faith or trust in their own intuition because I think that's really important. And also um, don't forget that our animals are incredibly intuitive, right? Like they... I know that if I put something in my dog's food and she's not eating it, it's because she's telling me she doesn't need it, right? Our our dogs, like if if we had the same kind of intuition about our bodies that our dogs and cats do about their bodies, we would be a very healthy society, right? And probably a lot skinnier. I'll just say that for myself. Um, But, um, you know, I think the importance of trusting your pet like if you offer them something and they don't want it, there's a reason why. So think about what is in that product, right? My dog, for whatever reason, will not take anything with milk thistle. Just no matter how I hide it, won't do it. So I have to find other ways, you know, to support her or help her detoxify. Um, if your dog won't eat a certain protein, that is information, right? And so trusting yourself, trusting your animal is so, so important. Um, our vets and our vet techs are amazing people and they have a lot of gifts, but they aren't with your pet 24 seven. So, you know, um, it's just like, I had to remind myself when I went to go see a doctor for me, like doctors are still, whether they're human doctors or animal doctors, they're still practicing medicine, right? It's not a perfect science. They're they're mainly trained diagnosticians, like, exactly. And I have great respect for the veterinary community, but I've, I started out my career as a vet tech at a very conventional practice, which as much as I loathed it many days, I learned a lot about the ritual nature of things and how things yeah. actually work when it comes to vets offices and how they make the decisions they do. Um, and if, you know, if you're going to a conventional vet, it's it's going to be the same stuff over and over again. And, and to kind of layer on what you guys were saying about 
you know, trusting your intuition, which is something I harp on people all the time, even when it comes to like transitioning, they're like, do I need to do the 10 day? Like you use your intuition, you know, your right. dog best. Right. But what I think is really important on top of that is educating yourself so that when you get to that point in that vet's office where you're approached with this fear based decision that they're giving you, you actually have the resources to go. Mm, no, that's not the only option. I know that's not yeah. the only option because I've actually educated myself. But what's tricky is that navigating the waters of these ego driven vets that will not come to an educated pet parent with any respect. And that drives me nuts. It's very commonplace where people are like, yeah, I told my vet I'm feeding raw and they just completely bashed me. Or I asked them about this and like CBD, for example, I asked them oh, about yeah. CBD and they said, they said it's, you know, THC is toxic to pets. And it's like, you know, you can only go so far, but if at least you come to your vet with a good base of knowledge and education where you can make those decisions with more information and not just like, oh, they have an infection They're you know, their, their white blood cell count is high. Let's put them on antibiotics. I mean, I, I get it all the time, even with one of the integrative vets I work for with Bruce, his white blood cell count was kind of high. And she's like, well, we could do antibiotics. I'm like, no, no. he doesn't have an infection. Like, yeah look at the dog instead of looking at a piece of paper that's where vets yes. usually go wrong is you have lab work done they yes. look at the, the results and go oh yeah their elk fast is high so they must have cushings like no that's that's not that's not how we're making this diagnosis right. this is asinine right. but right. It's, it's very unfortunate because i i definitely am torn many times where i i have to hear what these conventional vets tell their clients and some of it is just straight out lies and misinformation and things that they should get in trouble for telling clients like the whole dcm and heart disease thing don't even get me started on that because i just get like absolutely enraged when i hear somebody come in and they're like yeah my vet said i need to do more grains i'm like yeah. all right i literally go like how much time do you have for me to right. sit down and talk to you about this because this right. is this is not the case like the, this yeah. the data is not there if you're going off pure data the yeah. data supports what we're saying not what yeah. the vet is saying so yeah you yeah. know preach buying yourself preach. with education is the most important thing a pet parent can do and if Absolutely. you talk to good integrative vets like dr lauren beard is a dear friend of mine and she's wonderful she's said to me like vets should not be dealing with ear infections this should be something that pet parents manage on their own vets yeah. should be around for hit by car you know lacerations serious stuff that you know real like that kind of medicine is suited towards dietary stuff allergies yeah. anxiety these are things that vets just uh, conventional vets are just not well equipped to handle so it really yeah. is on the pet parent getting good source of information and trusting their intuition that is like yeah I, yep. I add to that too is like uh, the less stress you can have the less stress because even so many i have so many pet parents that come in here that are so stressed to the point that it causes their dogs to have like diarrhea or all of these other health issues and i'm like i know it's really hard and i know we can't control our stress that much but we have to for their sake because you're unfortunately possibly part of the cause of why they're possibly having chronic diarrhea all the time because everything else you're doing is 150 percent correct i don't yeah. know what else I can't offer you another supplement at this point because, you know, so it kind of comes down to managing your own stress. I had a customer also come in yesterday and she had got her lab work back and her white blood cells also high, all these different things. And I said, well, is your dog, is your dog sick or acting sick at all? Anything like that? I said, because if not, you know, then it's kind of like something that we should take maybe a little bit lighter and not stress about because you stressing is going to increase that, increase the inflammation, increase you know, stress. So it's not going to make it better. Um, but I, yeah. I, I testify that personally, because yeah. Bruce has high cortisol. He's got high elk fast, which is mostly cortisol derived. I've actually like done the isoform test and it's because of me. Yeah, it's no, I'm a stress ball that's riddled with anxiety. And I also directly have correlated his initial back injury to trauma that I experienced in my life at the exact yeah. time he started to fall apart. So it is 1000% a stress issue that needs to be managed and people, it, it, and I say it tongue in cheek because I'm like, I'm a hot mess. I have so much anxiety. I'm doing neurofeedback to try to fix it. But you got to manage your pet stress levels when they have cancer. You are such a huge source of what they feed on emotionally. Yeah. And if you don't figure out a way to do yoga, meditate, something, your dog is just going to feed off of that in the worst way possible. So 
Rodney and Karen okay. have talked about that too. Like that is one of those hidden things that people don't talk about enough is stress management for you so that your pet doesn't get stressed out. I, Michelle, I, so Michelle with my dog, he came to the shop. He's at the point now where he does not want to be here. And I think that's happens to a lot of shop dogs. But there's so many different energies, so many different personalities, so many different things that happen here that it becomes a job. It becomes takes much energy out of him to be a greeter, to be, to meet these people, all these different things. And she said, you know, he doesn't want to go anymore. He likes to ride in the car, but he wants to lay in the tr in the back of the car when he gets here. He doesn't want to actually be here. He just wants to ride in the car. And every time I come now, he's trying to get to the car, into the back of the car. And she does already, but it's it makes sense. It's very stressful for him. And that's why I would highly recommend talking with Michelle if you have something where it might be some stress. You know, usually it is. I'm not going to lie. Usually it is something. No, along those. it's <laughs> it's the absolute truth. I mean, our our animals are the biggest empaths in our life right if you know what an empath is like dogs and cats I'm, I'm much more trained in dogs than I am cats but it, this is especially true and um I, I also like you you know I'll spare you the details but yes like I can directly correlate my stress and my anxiety with my dog's gut who's already has a sensitive gut to begin with right so then you add them trying to sponge my emotions, right? And it's a recipe for diarrhea disaster, right? So yes, very true. I, I'm so glad you both mentioned that. We do have a question from my friend Alyssa uh, in Vermont. She said, I'm looking, um, just looking up a few of the suggested supplements and seeing that kelp can also be a thyroid supplement. Yes, the answer is yes, uh, Alyssa. My pup has inoperable thyroid cancer. I'm so sorry to hear that. Would you still recommend kelp? So I'm going to punt that over to our resident vet tech, Krista. Krista, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so that that is a tricky one. Um, I have personally used, so Bruce is hypothyroid, and I have a decent amount of experience trying to use natural remedies to deal with that, and they were not successful. So my point being, yes, uh, kelp is a goitidogenic, which means it, you know, can... Um, exacerbate thyroid function you know if your dog is hype, hyperthyroid which is extremely rare most dogs are hypo and most cats are hyper mm -hmm. um it, it could increase you know thyroid output but i really don't think it's one of those pro and con situations like do we try something that helps with cancer and might stimulate the thyroid i would but i would do it cautiously i would start at probably half the dose and again track see how they do if you're seeing any you know uh, symptoms that would indicate their thyroids, you know, a little bit off or overstimulated, then I would back off on it. But I, th I think it's worth a shot because when you're dealing with cancer, the cancer is the number one priority. It's, you know, the, the thing you got to tackle over anything. And it, it is, it is complicated when you have cancer and thyroid and you're dealing with something that can affect the thyroid. But I, I would, I would try it. If it was my own dog, I would give it a shot. Um, but I definitely would talk to a holistic vet about it and see what their thoughts were. But um, I've spoken to <clears throat> Dr. Connor Brady about it, and I I think it's worth a shot personally. I think you know its benefits definitely outweigh any potential side effects using kelp with with thyroid issues. And Krista, you mentioned that you carry um, some of his other products, Dr. Brady's products. Do you also carry the um, just like the straight up kelp and like the Canada and stuff like that? Yes, I carry everything that can come into this country, which means everything except for their neem product that can't pass customs for whatever stupid reason. So yeah, I, ca I carry all of his supplements. I was, okay. it took, God, damn near six months to get them into my store for the first time because of, you know, international stuff and transfers and all that. But it, his supplements are absolutely amazing. And I, I'm such a fangirl of Connor Brady. Oh. I, guy yeah I good line all day long he is just such a wealth <laughs> of awesome information and just cutting the crap like yeah. he, there's there's no bs there's no you know cherry picking or like you yeah. know he's just he's he's the best and the fact that he's good looking and has an irish <laughs> accent just makes it better right so yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i actually love that because i had been getting his irish kelp either from dr judy morgan whom i love but also ain't cheap um and um the last time i got it i had to get it from him so it actually had to come from ireland when i got the canada so um just the fact alone that you carry it and you're closer to me than and Dr. Morgan is because I love her, but you know, she's good and I'd rather support 
the small <laughs> girls. I, um, that. I do. I do ship internationally. I've sh I shipped uh, fecal transplant pills to Croatia, Lithuania, some somewhere out in Eastern um, Europe. The doggy biome stuff. You ship yeah. that out. That's awesome. So Hallie, you also ship internationally, and I think that's a new thing for you. No, not our. That all got miss basically understood. I had a my rep my from Shopify basically say, oh yeah, we're doing this new thing called Markets Pro on Shopify and. Now they'll be able to go through all your products, see which ones work. Kind of, they'll be the middleman and help basically, you know, ship internationally because it'll go through you to Shopify, basically markets, and then to the customer. So they're the ones they see that's going to be the ones shipping the product. Well, it comes to find out, pet trees aren't allowed in the internet on their markets. I'm like, why did she tell me that? So that was a lot of fun, but no. One day, you basically okay. she was telling me, see, there's cut, there's companies that people like companies work with that you have to pay oh. money to get them to get your products to pass through customs. Um, and so you're basically working with a customs regulatory cut um, company spending hundreds of dollars, if not by thousands of dollars, I should say, to be able to ship internationally and be able to get through customs. Basically, when I tried to ship to Canada, I it used to be able to kind of work, but then sometimes it would get stopped and they would send me it back. And then in the box, it would say, um, you have to get a vet's approval to ship it to Canada and no vet i don't know what vet they want me to go to you might know krista but they said uh you have to find a, a vet to approve your treats before you can ship them to canada canada is a really weird weird country when it comes to what they allow and don't allow i've heard that yeah i mean yeah. i've talked with manufacturers about like what's allowed in canada versus what goes out of canada there's different restrictions it's Canada is is kind of the wild wild west. They they do things just real real strange. I mean, even their pet food regulation or lack thereof. Like it's like okay, you're not going to let me give somebody full spectrum hemp hemp extract in Canada, but you can sell completely incomplete and not balanced dog food and just whatever. Like how frustrating. Yeah, it is. It is a very frustrating market for sure. Um. Okay, I I want to be respectful of everyone's time. It's already the top of the hour. How did that happen all of a sudden? <laughs> but um, so for folks at home, if they want to go to your website and purchase your products, um, is there anything they should know or do or any special discounts they could look out for or anything like that? Um, for our have uh, Lone Star 10 is like 10% off in your orders. We also have subscriptions that if you order on a subscription type service, you're always getting, I think, 15% off. So awesome. Go. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank you, Allie. And Krista. Oh, yeah. So um, I have uh, the benefit of having multiple shipping options available. So if someone does want something rushed, I can do that. But I also have a built in uh, loyalty that crosses over if you buy online, if you buy in person, um, you'll get points as you spend and then can get. Um, discounts i also honor all like astro frequent buyers when it comes to nice as a frequent buyers so yeah it's it's nice when you know you can order direct from companies but they're not going to be able to give you overnight shipping or you know you can actually talk to the person and be like when is this going out whereas with us you can directly call us and phone an order or do it online um, everything that's in my store is on my online store so it's it's all super easy um and because i don't I use a kind of a more pain in the butt platform, but it's so I can sell everything without any issues. Sure. Like Shopify is goofy about hemp products and stuff like that. So I can sell everything. just about everything off my platform. Yeah. Awesome. I am going to um, put my friend and colleague on the spot. Wendy. Hi. Um, she's like, thanks, Julie Lynn. I'm going to hear about it later, but that's okay. So the reason we have Hallie here is because Wendy has been purchasing Hallie's box. So just for a refresher, um, not only does Wendy have three senior labs, because why not, and a bunch of cats, she also, and we're going to save you the story other than to say it's a doozy, um, basically got, I don't know, what's the word for it, hustled into taking on a um, very neglected 10-year-old bloodhound overweight bloodhound that she is essentially rehabbing herself and i tell her almost daily that she's doing the lord's work as my grandmother would say <laughs> but um wendy why don't you tell folks about your experience with hallie's 
boxes and why you love them so much? Um, well, Hallie is a saint. That's why. Um, because every time I get a box, I have to call Hallie and say, my dog won't eat this. My dog will eat this. Um, she's very good at customizing boxes specific to each of my dogs. And Hallie has actually just created a box for Sadie, who is the bloodhound that I have taken on. Um, and so we're trying some new stuff with her um, to see what will work. Um, I also am doing a little bit of investigating and getting some stuff from Pug and Hound to help as well. Um, but I have gotten Haley's boxes, uh, Haley's boxes for probably two or three years now. It's been a while. Um, and she does a really good job of customizing the box to what my dogs will like. And when new things come in, she automatically adds those in. Um, she's also very good customer service wise because if she's something, if there's something that she thinks might work or might not, she reaches out to me before I ever get the chance to reach out to her and say anything. So um, that's awesome. It, yeah. Every time, every time I'm making a mystery box, I'm like, I hope they like this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I am like this and honestly no one's ever complained like I mean, obviously like they tell me like oh yeah they like something but no one's ever like oh they hated it so much give me my money back they've never that's surprisingly never happened to me and i'm like thank god because every time i put something in a box i'm like oh, hopefully it's gonna work <laughs> now so that's really interesting because i would think just the opposite i would my think that people were so particular and then would have a problem um <laughs> my <laughs> dogs my dogs unfortunately don't eat any hairy stuff but we're going to give it a try with Sadie to see if we can get her teeth cleaned up a little bit and get her some good nutrition. Um, but her, her mystery box is amazing and she customizes it to the size of your dog and um, to their likes. So I can't say enough good stuff about it. Not only that, but she does have some other really cool stuff in the store. Um, she does some paintings. If anybody's looking for customized paintings of their pets, that's she awesome. Does, she does a bunch oh, of stuff. That, um, we don't actually do that, but it's okay. We did. We used to have an artist that we could refer to, but he stopped doing the custom portraits, unfortunately. Oh. I'm not. Thomas. I wish I was that talented, but I'm not. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> that. Well, <laughs> see, it shows you that it's been a while since I asked. But oh, um, yeah. I, I've just dipped into Pug and Hound, um, and I am going to utilize her extensively um, because her she carries such a wide variety of products and because I am the parent of two cancer patients um, and a cancer nurse myself, um, I can see why she purchases the things she does and how she follows the lines. And she doesn't know it yet, but she's also going to help me with um, some <laughs> solutions, raw choices too. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so I love so in case you're wondering where all of the money that we don't make on the wholesome dog <laughs> goes to, uh, right. you're looking at two of them. That's right. That's right. Um, I, I spend an average of quadruple of what I make for what a, one of the vets I work for. Oh my wow. it's, it's not about the money. It's about the experience. Yeah. Maybe. About the experience. I have five jobs because I love them all because I learn. Yeah. I get yeah. to share that information with all my customers. It's great. But yeah, yeah. I, I don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> I started paying myself like last year around October. So we've been almost in business for four years. If that helps anyone figure out how much money I'm making. That's, that sounds about right, actually, for every pet store I've ever helped run. That, that's that's also why, just so you know, Hallie, I will never own my own pet store. <laughs> yes, because I also know that part of it. We, we have a, a fellow, a fellow uh, brand, if you guys know Bears Bites. Sam Hutchinson, and she's like, I'm going to start my own shop. What do you guys think? And we're like, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. You're going to regret it. Just, sure just enough, find some like, really good ones. It's a lot of work. I'm like, yeah, yeah. just do your treats. You make yeah, great yeah. stuff. You're going to be so overwhelmed having a store because it just consumes you. Yeah. yeah. In and a good way, store, but yeah. Our store, thankfully, in our online business are finally like neck and neck with each other, which is like I thought would never possibly ever happen. So it's like awesome crazy to me at this point so I mean I thought that my online store was going to carry the store for however long I thought this would be like my passion project and my online business was just going to pay for the passion part of it so you know thankfully well, they're great. not miracle but I'm just like I, I think it's it comes along with people trusting you and knowing that you have like their best you know 
um, gold. And yeah. Chris, what I'm saying, but yeah, yeah. It, it really that and honestly being honest with people because a lot of people will come in and send a situation and say, well, should I do this? Will it make my dog sick? And I'm like, no, I promise. I'm like, Josh, I mean, it could. I'm not going to lie to you. It definitely could. But I'm like, I, I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't. I have well intentions of it making your dog healthy. So yeah. I'm going to see their dog's not going to get sick because it's brand new and your dog has never tried it before. So I agree, Holly, that the, the thing that keeps me going is people's feedback when they see a change or there's a difference. I'm like, please never stop telling me this because I don't hear it enough. We follow oh. up with customers and like ask them, but a lot of the times they don't answer the phone. And it's like, I live for someone coming in and being like, that worked. They're doing so much better. I'm like, yes, yeah. this That's is what I do. I never get sick of it. It's the best feeling. I yeah. think that ha it happens so actually kind of frequently, thankfully right now, but I have a customer that I've switched their dog over to raw or something or just different food. And they're like, oh yeah, they're coming in. And at that same time, I'm talking to a new person that just came in the door and they have like similar dogs, both little dogs. And I'm like, here, perfect timing. I'm like, so how does your dog doing on it? What are you doing for your dog? And they're over yeah. here. Oh yeah, she loves her little meatball. She gets one meatball in the morning, <laughs> ball at night. And she loves it so much. She's so healthy now. And she has so much more energy. And I'm like, thank you so much for your testimony. <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. Well, okay. I want to, yeah, but I want to thank you both for your time um, this evening to, to spend with us. And again, just want to reiterate to folks watching at home, um, there's a lot of pet food stores out there and there's a lot of not really great pet food stores um, who it's much easier to, you know, throw out some Royal Canaan or some Hills or any of those foods that you just don't want to feed your dog if you absolutely don't have to. Um, and so we are doing, we do these series to help promote um, the little gals, we'll call them, um, because it's mostly women. We, of course, want to support women-owned businesses, but um so as, as we always say, um, Wendy and I, our standards for our dogs are incredibly high and we don't recommend or bring on anyone that isn't good enough for our dogs. So if it's not good enough for our dogs, it's not good enough for your dogs. Um, so we'll put links, um, to both of your stores. Thank you both so much for your time and, um, all that you do because none of us are in this to make money because it's the wrong business to be in, but we know you do it because it's a passion of love. And because you want to help people's pets thrive um, and whether they have cancer or they just, we want our, you know, dogs to have a good life. Um, what we feed them and what we put in their bodies is the most important thing we can do. So thank you both for joining us. Thank you everyone who watched us at home and who's watching the recording and have a great night and we will see you next time. Take care. Thanks. Take care. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye.